Stitch and this is floss tube number 55. This is a channel about um, crafts. I'm a multi crafter, but my floss tubes are mainly about my stitching, my cross stitch. Today is a very windy but lovely Sunday, 7th of April, and this is my roundup for March. I did want to do it last weekend, but it just didn't happen. So here we are. <laughs> so I'll try to stick to the March roundup as much as possible even though i've been stitching on a few things this week this week that obviously they will be part of it and what we will be seeing today we'll have a little appreciation shout out as usual we will go to the construction zone after that where i'll show my whips a couple finishes no starts flesh news um and then we will go over what was calling my name last month when we had the last like I had the last video and what I actually did and not did from there and also what's calling my name for the next month ahead for April it's quite exciting April is my birthday month um so everything is a treat yes I'll get this it's my birthday month and you know how it goes but Michael has been um looking at getting me a few bits as well so i'm quite excited about that so next time i see you i might have a few collection enhancement for michael who knows what it will be it might be knitting it might be crochet it might be stitching we'll see so yes i'm very excitable um in march i'm trying to remember what we did a lot has happened i think last time we spoke was right after the newcastle two-day retreat which was at the end of february and then in march at the beginning of march we had the yorkshire retreat which absolutely loved i really really enjoyed it and i'm very looking forward to my october one the yorkshire one um it was so much fun and you know they changed a few things um and they shook things up and it, it was really fun i really really enjoyed it there was quite a bit of haul as expected um a lady that has a shop harbor dashery she was doing a d stash so i couldn't help myself because there was quite a few um old uh patterns uh <laughs> so yeah there goes me not buying um but yeah that retreat was really good what else did i do in march i cannot even remember I've been busy every month, yet I don't remember, but it was Easter last weekend, so we had friends over, it's just been, it's just been mad, and April is going to be a bit mad now as well, because next weekend we've got the TA meeting, if you are up in the northeast near the Newcastle, up in Tyne area, we do meet once a month, um, a Saturday every month, so feel free to join us. So we'll have that next Saturday. The Saturday after is the Mirabilia. The weekend after is the Mirabilia retreat in Northampton. So I'm looking very, very forward to that. And the weekend after it's my birthday. I'm going to Edinburgh for a wool show on my actual birthday on the 27th. And on the 30th, we're flying to Malta for a week. So chances are that the April roundup will happen after the 7th of May because I am in Malta between the 30th of April and the 7th of May and I won't be taking everything with me uh, to film there plus I don't get a minute of peace <laughs> there to to actually record I barely even craft because they just won't leave me alone <laughs> but that's good because I get to see my family uh, so so yes so that's that's me through May it's absolutely mad but I'm looking forward to it. It's it's really it's really good. I do love spring and summer always make me very, very happy um, and very upbeat. <sighs> so where shall we start? We'll start with the appreciation shout out. Now today I am a bit biased. Um this week, what a week ago, I would say my good friend, one of my best friends, Charlotte, released another video. I haven't been watching much Flosstube, I must admit. I've been um, getting a few migraines. I found that 
eat, if I eat a lot of sugary stuff, it triggers my migraine. So it looks like coffee and sugary stuff trigger my migraine. Obviously, Easter, ate a lot of Easter eggs. <laughs> and that has like literally killed me for the rest of the week. I've been having head headaches on and off for the rest of the week, trying to recover from Easter, which means that I've been avoiding screens except for work, so I've not really been watching much Flosstube. However, I couldn't help myself when it popped up saying Stitching with the Kids Around has a new video and that's my good friend Charlotte and Charlotte has like ah, the best collection. She's got over, I, I think she's about over 300 whips now and she's got a great mix of Mirabilians, Bellas, Chatelaines, few samplers you know up stuff like she stitches everything a bit like me except more than me because she does full coverage as well i don't do full coverage but she does full coverage as well um, and she's a prolific stitcher she stitches very very quick everything in hand and yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's really it's really good to see her stuff it was funny because this video was specifically about shuttlings we are doing the run up the 100 days I'll come back to it when we do the whips, but we're doing the 100 days to the countdown to the Chatelaine retreat. So he, she had all the Chatelaines out. So she showed this video of all Chatelaines. I was thinking, but I don't remember her stitching on that. I don't remember her having that. I don't remember. So it's like her Chatelaines tripled overnight. It's, it's, it's absolutely mad, but it's really good. And she always enables me. And she's got a, unfortunately, she lost um, her cat, Toby, which was very, very sad, but now has um, another cat. His name is Zach and he's the cutest thing ever. It's, it was funny because I was watching her video waiting until he popped up behind her jumping around behind her like i couldn't wait to see a little glimpse of him and the other day we were zooming and he was just literally climbing up the curtains behind her he's such cute i can't wait to meet him in june and um, when i go for the chatelaine retreat because i'll be popping by her house um, and i'll be able to see him as well so i can't wait to meet zach and can't wait obviously to see her kids as well but if you're not watching charlotte at stitching with the kids around go and have a look especially if you like chatelaines and who doesn't even if you don't stitch them everyone loves chatelaines so that's my appreciation shout out today so let's go to the construction zone now what do we have we started the month the first of march with 77 whips because in february i had 77 whips. I had two starts, two finishes, um, and stayed at 77. Now, in March, I had 77 whips at the beginning. I had two finishes, but I had no starts. So I'm at 75 whips now, which is what I started the year with as well. So I've evened out um, the year again. And then I have worked on four. One of them is not a whip. I'll explain. So I've worked on six projects in total. Two I finished, four are not finished. Where are we gonna start? Finishes or whips? Let's start with the whips. Um, first of all, I'm gonna show you Sarah Millthorpe. Now, I stitched on Sarah Millthorpe at the beginning of the month, and you'll see a photo. Um, Sarah Milthorpe 1834 is from Hands Across the Sea Samplers um, and Sarah Milthorpe was um, an exclusive for an American retreat and the Yorkshire retreat for a year but now it is on general sale and you can find it on, on sale. I am stitching Sarah on Pioneer Trails 40 Count by Mountaineer. Mountaineer is the brand and I absolutely love this color. I actually have another fat half or something like that of this color. Right, let's see if you can see. You won't be able to see the... Um, oh, there you go. That's a good representation of the fabric. So you'll see like it's not dark, but it's got dark splotches where it makes it look aged. And this is where I am. Now, with Sarah Milthorpe, I am actually... Let me this first i am changing down here the cartouche i i'm not a purist so i don't need my sampler 
to have the girl's name and it being um, pure as it is so I'm changing this cartouche with like a heart um, and some flowers and then I'm changing the words and the words currently say the loss of time is much the loss of grace is more the loss of Christ is such as no man can restore I am religious but I don't like religious verses on my stitching so I will be changing um, grace and Christ to say it's gonna say the loss of time is much the loss of love is more the loss of family is such as man, no man can restore and um, you know referring to my dad passing away so I've recharted those two areas uh, ready to go when I am stitching but I, I am not there yet I did start stitching on the over one um the over one wording here and it is hard work doing the over one on a 40 count especially because the thicker letters that is actually Algerian eyelet rather than normal stitches so yeah it's 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 hard work but so what I've started doing is I started doing one strand here and then I continue working on a motif and this was up to down here that that was one page so I have one about one one page out of 12 something like that I would say this was something that was on my radar at the beginning of the month then I got sort of obsessed with other projects and I didn't come back to it I would like to come back to it at some point but I don't think it's on my list of things that are calling for me in April and probably not May with the with the Mirabilia and the Bella Filipina retreat the Bella and the Miras have been calling my name a bit more sorry so I think I'll pick this back up probably in summer but we'll see I might surprise you it might be out next month we'll see and I'm stitching this with the Swa Belger the cold force while done chair. So that's Sarah Miltorp. It did come with me to the Yorkshire retreat, but it didn't come out. Um, so I must have stitched on it literally the first week of March. So that's the first one. The second thing I worked on is um the Yorkshire flag. So the Yorkshire admin have started this new it's not stitch along it's pass along is there so the idea is um the vifster and check her on etsy i believe she has her own website as well she's got these like big flags that are made of quaker diamonds kind of thing uh, motifs and uh, right now there is a big stitch along and a lot of people are stitching these flags for their countries and the Yorkshire admin decided that they would pass along one of them with the Yorkshire colors and it's the Yorkshire flag and everyone or anyone who attends or is part of the Yorkshire stitchers group and would like to have a piece of them or their stitching in the flag to do two Quaker motifs. So currently I should be showing you a photo or a few photos of what i did i was the second one to stitch on it because just because i was there jane was um jane one of the admins she was finishing the, her two squares she was the first one to do and i said look if i have it i'll do it within the weekend so i literally took it the saturday and spent saturday and sunday stitching on it to finish these two boxes and passed it along to the next person so i stitched this while i was there and i didn't have to bring it home um and i really really enjoyed it i enjoyed it so much that i actually went and had a look at them at if she has the maltese flag and she does have the maltese flag i haven't bought it yet and um, but uh, it is on my head like in my head of something that i might want to stitch in the future because i really really like it and it's very relaxing i didn't think i'd enjoy stitching on it but i actually enjoyed stitching on it because it was very relaxing and the effect was really really good the Maltese flag has red white and a bit of gray for the George's cross so it would be only three colors I actually have silks for you Hanks 
that would be perfect for it so i wouldn't even need to because what would i use i would probably use a really light like probably an antique white fabric i wouldn't even um bother with 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 a hand dyed for it so i could do it from stash just the pattern so it's something that i think in the future i see myself stitching um but maybe just not right now because i don't want to start huge stuff and it is huge but i would do it on a 40 count anyway so that was the second thing i worked on the third project i worked on was the magic lamp by bella filippina with this bella filippina i'm stitching it in hand i'm beading as i go and i'm just like half stitching half beading depending on the mood i've been really really enjoying it and i think i do want to finish it by the mira well i i by the bella sorry the uk bella retreat in may and this is being stitched on the fabric doesn't come out well so the fabric is like a pinky with purple and splotches of like orangey greenish well no i would say coral pink purple kind of color and it is hand dyed by stephanie in the color melody i believe it's 32 count it might be 28 but i think it's 32 i had a fat quarter and this is half of the fat quarter i cut it and the tag is with the other half which is downstairs so first i did the arch then I stitched the curtains, then I beaded from this half down, so you'll see all of this is beaded, that is beaded, it just needs a bit of back stitch in between, all of that is beaded as well. And now I've started on the lady herself. She is charted on a really nice bluey colour, but I wasn't sure that this stand stood out enough. And then I, I started thinking, shall I go a sandy color? Because she is the magic lamp. It's a reference to Jasmine from Aladdin. And I started thinking, you know, shall I go like desert sand color? And then I worried about her skin tone and the golds there is in her. So in the end, I went with something that was lighter. And I think it was a really, really good choice. And I'm really, really happy with it. One change that I am doing is... At the bottom she has her name in a sash and i don't like that i don't like that with all of them there is no white ellis um is she the third one yes just no one else and for all of them i want to do the change where i remove the sash with the name so you'll see here i've already continued the border where the sash comes out and i've been working on recharting so i've already like taken the chart and recharted this part of it in a in max stitch um because i'm on a mac computer and i bought the max stitch license and now i just need to I've, I've i've charted everything around it i just need to rechart the colors that go there um but yeah so from here i plan to go up to her head stitch on her head and then go down so that will be the last thing i stitch so i'm not in a hurry that i need it to be done like next weekend in terms of the re recharting but that's that's my plan for this and she's absolutely gorgeous the colors are beautiful sorry if the colors are blowing out a bit the weather is a bit weird but that brown here is all crinic and quite a bit of beads okay so that's the next thing i worked on and then the fourth project i worked on that is still a whip and not a finish and this is going to be a frame is so as i mentioned before there is currently the there is the countdown this started on was it the 21st of march i would say on the 21st of march marked 100 days exactly before the retreat of for the chatelaine retreat so as every as every other year we're holding the 100 days of the 100 days countdown of chatelaine to the chatelaine retreat um where every week you post your progress and 
at first I was gonna get small hamama oases out because I want I, like I don't know I thought I would have it finished this year so I thought I'll bring it out and then I just wasn't feeling it on that day I wasn't feeling it so I got all my chatelaine out which I've got about seven eight whips for chatelaine but I say seven because amazing lavender to lace has only like 20 stitches so that's not a proper whip but so I've got about seven whips and I started looking at them and I thought you know what I feel I'm feeling the summer mandala even if it's just for a little bit so I got my summer mandala out and I started stitching on it and you won't be able to see the rest I can put a photo so that you'll be able to see down here for the photo um because I've got the center is fully done with beading but what I did is once I did the center I started going up so when I picked this up I think I'm gonna have to stand up here there you go I'll stand up this is better so when I started working on it I already had these clouds here I had one ladybird and I had some like the outline of this medallion so then what I did is I added the other ladybird now this chart does half of the insects over one and beetles and stuff like that and half of them not over one and I thought that was weird plus you lose some of the effect so I've been doing everything over one so what I did is I took this one I mirror imaged it and I stitched it here then for this one one of them was over one and one of them wasn't and I took the other one from the corner and sort of mirrored it so that they are both over one as well but so I had this corner finished and the outline of this medallion but since then I added the ladybird since the 21st of March I did these flowers here which are all Jessica's so do you see the dark color here that is all Jessica stitches another Jessica stitch in the middle all these purple ones here are Jessica stitches uh, no that's dense roads in the yellow here and some Algerian eyelets so I've been having quite a mix of different stitches but oh it is very Jessica heavy I did a couple I got on a roll and did everything so yeah I did a ladybird this flowers all this corner up here so from this blue upwards all that corner and all these here I have added since the 21st of March I've been really really enjoying it and I'm thinking of continuing going up to hit the top finish the top half and then scroll down to do the sides I don't know if I do oops well that went flying <laughs> I don't know if I'll do the sides this time in these 100 days I feel that once I do the top I might get a bit sick of stitching on this and want to stitch on a different chatelaine so every week every check-in on a Saturday there is the chance for you to change um the chatelaine you're working on so I might change it at some point we'll see so yes uh, I'm stitching this on a fabric call it's a fabric of the month from I think 2020 from Sparkly's where I asked her if she could dye me a bigger piece cut her everywhere um, it's like a greeny color which gave me like that summer springy kind of feel and I thought it went well with everything here and yeah I've been really really enjoying it all the little critters so that's your ladybirds that's the Jessica stitch flowers some bees on there like wasps and you'll see their their wings are made of crinic and then you've got some little beetles here and the snail which are all over one it's absolutely gorgeous I, I really really am enjoying stitching on this so that's the summer mandala by Chatelaine stitched on a sparkly fabric of the month all the called for um silks anything else 32 count I'm stitching on this 32 count and I think that is all so you'll definitely see it next month with some more progress but I don't know if I'll stick to it for the 100 days we'll see I'm just taking it 
week by week depending on the mood so that I don't I don't burn out on any of it so that was my and if you want to join us with the 100 days, I know it's already started, but you know, if you want to put your progress or photos of a Chatelaine you're stitching on in the group, in the UK Chatelaine Retreats group, it's always very welcome. We love being enabled and seeing what everyone else is stitching. So that's the four projects I stitched on that are not finished. Then we had two finishes. First of the two finishes, you should, not you should, if you follow me and you've watched the video before this one, which was a plus tube extra to show a finish, you would have seen this finish. And she is Blossom by Mirabilia. Now, Blossom, in the last video, I'm pretty sure I had only here and here left to stitch and then the white beading. So the beading from here to the bottom only everything else was done so i finished it by the 6th of march only a few days into into the month this month and it's amazing because at the beginning of february i only had her head done so it's amazing how much you can get done in a month when you are i'm not purely monogamous but you're semi-monogamous with a project and um, if you want to have a closer look at her there is the video before this one where i go over all the threads i go over the fabric i go over um hair in much more detail and like things about stitching hair a few tweaks i found where i thought maybe this is charted wrongly and and i fixed it and how i bead and stuff like that so so that's that's all in the finishes review so that's another it's a first tube extra that i'm trying to do this year for every finish so I want to document every finish I have this year in more detail so that was the video before this one I stitched Blossom on ice cream by Sparklies on a 32 count and I have another fat quarter that was stitched in the same dye stitched it was dyed in the same dye bath for Princess Eliana so that they have matching fabrics even though i've saw i've seen an eliana at the yorkshire retreat and i put my blossom near her and like the oranges don't match eliana's much more muted in the oranges and then these flowers are the same but eliana's are purple and hers are pink for example but i still think they go well together the style of them so i'm still doing them as sister pieces even though their colors don't purely match so that was Blossom by Mirabilia and oh I've got my Ari out as well so I might put Blossom up there for a few days as well I work here in this room and it's always nice to have have them behind me and um, for me to look at when I have a break so the next thing that I finished I actually barely had a star on this at the beginning of the month so I, I wasn't I didn't pick it up thinking I was gonna finish it but once I picked it up I just couldn't help myself and this is Easter egg hunt sampler by the Victoria the Victoria sampler and this has actual hardinger in it and I it's my first foray in proper hardening and I didn't I did some fabric cutting before which was something like this where it was more like weaving stitches but this one had full-on hardening there and it was the first time so this is a band sampler where you stitch it band by band first you have the little church you had the grass like little crocuses the cat with the spring scene some interwoven stitch daisies easter eggs the easter bunny some more lacing here obviously happy easter the kids easter egg hunting the baskets with eggs and then the hardinger and i will be having a video like i did for the others where i do a finish video and I will go through it in much more detail. I'll, I'll go top down and I'll go through band by band what stitches are used and um, things that are like over one. Like, for example, this Easter bunny and um, some threads I changed in it. 
and yeah the stitches the actual stitches so i'll have the book near me and i'll say what the actual st um, stitches are but in the meantime i want you to have a look at this and you tell me how beautiful is that so that is hmm, i think i've got a loose thread there anyway that is my first hardinger furry and i think i didn't too too bad for the first time really 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 enjoyed it i did find it a bit hard on my brain in some places where i had to watch a video slow motion she has good instructions but the videos are always better but victoria sampler have instructions on youtube on how to do all of this and i really 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 enjoyed it and i think it's not half bad could have been better but it's not half bad so yes i'm very very happy with my finish i did use the accessory pack which came with it except one color which i thought looked weird and i changed one single color which was used in places like the church's roof the cat the happy easter and a few other places um i didn't think it was dark enough but other than that i used the called for everything that came with it and as soon as i finished this and i stitched it on a fabric that came with it which i believe is ice blue zweigart 28 count but it wasn't labeled so i cannot be sure i got it from chris at nimble timble and she puts fabric in there for you and you she doesn't label what fabric she's put into the kit <sighs> also look at my french knots up here how cute are my french knots i actually this is the first time i made french knots and they turned out really pretty without me having to do them and redo them i did iron the piece which flattened them a little bit now but still they look really 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 good so yeah i'm very very proud of this i literally at the beginning i picked this up after i finished blossom which is probably 7th of march around 7th of march or, or something no i finished blossom 3rd of march and i picked this up 6th of march and i literally had this steeple on the church and a little bit of the roof here so i started stitching that and i actually undid that because i didn't like the color so practically i've stitched all of it from the th 6th of march and i finished it last wednesday which would be into april so technically this is an april finish but i've stitched most of it literally after after the end of march i only had these crosses here and the middle cross to do so i'm gonna classify it as a march finish because i did most of it in march so in a month again i finished the whole thing when i finished it i was like okay what what victoria samplers i have that are summary i need to work on something else and i stopped myself because i've got a few victoria samplers that are started already they are pumpkin patches autumny and i've got a few christmas ones and i'm not feeling christmas or autumn currently and i thought oh, i've got so many things started i don't know i just wasn't um, feeling a start so i stopped myself and i thought you know what i'll pick up a um needle point that i have already started from my pile up there instead of starting yet another big project that i'll obsess with and leave my whips to the side so that's what i've did so that's what i've worked on in march where do we go from here so that's that's my construction zone what i worked on starts finishes whips everything let's go to what's been calling my name so last month i had about six that i mentioned that are calling my name there was blossom which obviously i finished there was easter egg hand sampler which i picked up and i finished as well sarah milthorpe was calling my name i worked on it at the beginning of the month and then i sort of put it down 
then, except then, there was another three. There was Pavane for this times by Long Dog Sampler that I didn't pick up at all. There was Strawberry Filled Forever by Blackbird that I didn't pick up at all. And there was Villa Mirabilia. Now, Villa Mirabilia, after I finished the Easter Egg Hunt, has been calling my name and I've picked it up. So, what is calling my name this month? Villa Mirabilia is calling my name. And definitely it has been calling my name because I've been working on it. And actually, let me show you. Even though this is technically April. Where is it? Oh, it's already out. How nice of past me to already prepare it. Out. So with Villa Mirabilia, I am not doing the urn, the border, the insignia or the flowers. So I have been working on it the last two days or since friday and let's do this because she is big i am stitching this on a 36 count picture this plus havisham so it's a tight 36 count so you see here the ribbon at first i trailed it to be a bit like here because you can see it here it peaks at the other side so i recharged it to trail and then i didn't like it and i pulled it back and finished this pointy now i'm not 100 percent sure if that looks right or not it looks like better than before but i'm not 100 percent so i frogged that i did it as i think it looks okay then at the mirror retreat i'll see what the others think also here in the shadows it had bits of black that I just felt they are called for like that. And I felt they were a bit mm, starky in color, like very stark. So I changed them to the darker fuchsia that is in the design. And then I started working here again. So I have done her hand, this part of the ribbon. I would say in here. I've done more or less this. So now what I have from here up is literally that is around this place. I only have her torso and her head to do. So I am pretty confident that this is going to be a finish before the Mirabilia retreat in April. And that's my aim. So I'll be stitching this the next few days. It, I do stitch it in hand so it's a bit wrinkly. But I really, really enjoy stitching it in hand and it looks very delicate because it's on one thread instead of two thread. But look at that. That's a monster, monster skirt. Now what's left of her should like fly by now that the skirt is finished. So that's, she is 100% on my radar to get it finished this month. Two Mirabilia finishes in two months. Who am I? No. Who even am I? I'm really enjoying building this bond with my projects where I continue stitching them for a while. Now, after I finish Villa Mirabilia, the next Mirabilia that is calling my name is going to be Botanical Garden which is not a huge Mirabilia. I don't have too, too much done on her, but you know, it's not huge. I think it uses half, yeah, it does. See, that's my fat quarter and it's a crafty kitten fabric called Retreat. Retreat to the country, 32 count. Fast linen, but you see, I started it this way because it uses only half, so I'll be cutting it in half this way and stitching on it. So, only her crown is done. There is quite a bit of cramming there, however, I think she, once I get on with it, she'll go pretty quick. And um, so, that's what I'm gonna pick up. That's what probably is coming to the York, well, to the UK Mirabilia retreat. I'll take all the Mirabilias I have, but this will probably be what I'll stitch on mainly if Villa Mirabilia is finished. So she is definitely calling my name. So that is my Mirabilia kick. My Bella Filipina kick will be scratched by the magic lamp, which I'll be working on and hoping to finish before 
mid of May when there is the retreat. Summer Mandala still calling my name for the shuttling itch to scratch the itch. For the needle point itch to scratch the itch, I go out in their sections and it is downstairs because I've been working on it this morning. I picked it up this morning. So I cannot show you, but I can put a photo of where I was um, when I picked it up this morning. It is by Texture Treasures. It's a beautiful needlepoint, but very complex. It's one of the more complex ones that I've had. And I've been really, really enjoying it. So I think it might be like my Sunday stitch or Saturday stitch if I'm not doing anything and I have quite a few hours where I can sit and stitch. So that will be my needlepoint. Um, I do have picked out something else that's been on my mind that I'm thinking might be a finish. It, it, it's a good one to finish in this month. And that is um, Summer at the Shore by Cottage Garden Samplings. It is part of the A Time for All Season series. Sorry, I stitched this in hand, so it's a bit wrinkly. I haven't picked it up this month yet, but last time, obviously, I, I picked it up. I stitched on it. And it is my seagull piece, my current seagull piece. So I literally have the head of the seagull, the boat, the waves, just the top of the lighthouse and a few of these starfish to do. So I think this could be my easy stitch that I carry around where I can put a few strands here and there and actually get it done maybe this month. So I, I might be able to have to finish this month and go from 75 whips to 73 whips. That would be lovely. But if it's not, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's okay. The other thing that is on my mind currently is the snowman. I have been past the next snowman to stitch. This is um, a piece that was started by Jackie, but now is Charlotte's. And that's well that's that's how it will be but that's how you can see it is Jackie and Charlotte have stitched on it already Tracy has stitched on it and my snowman will be going here so this I want to pick it up this week and I want to finish it before I start picking up anything else so that I can give it at the Mirabilia retreat pass it along to Aileen so I would like to get it done before the weekend of the 19th. So that is that is on my mind as well. Is that everything that is on my mind? I don't know. I feel like I, there is something else that is on my mind currently. But who knows? You know me. I'll just pick up whatever um, comes to my mind. I this So this year, having the freedom or letting myself pick up just whatever I'm feeling has been working really good because I've been really enjoying what I'm stitching rather than feeling like I have to stitch on certain things. I have said no to many stitch alongs and I am glad I have because I haven't felt like I've missed out because I'm still following their progress. I am still like enjoying their stitching but I no, I'm not feeling like I have to stitch on certain things and it's making me want to stitch more. It's making me finish stuff more and you know, it's it's a good kick. I, I am not doing it because I want to reduce my whips because they're driving me crazy. I just, I loved my whips so much that it was weighing me down that I've got so much things here that I love that I'm not stitching. on. So it's working really well for me and if I continue like this in the rest of the year that I'm continue being so happy with how I am working I might just keep it the same for next year and who knows let's see let's see so I have had since the beginning of the year I have had four starts and four finishes currently which is okay I'm not I'm not keeping it as a rule that I I start for every finish that's the other thing that's on my mind. The other thing that's been on my mind is Deep Blue Sea Chatelaine Mandala. Um, I have it fully kitted. I was going to start it, not the last Chatelaine retreat, the one before. I didn't. I was going to start it the last one. I didn't. And now it's really calling my name. So I might, if 
I'm feeling it. Have it as a birthday start at the beginning or at the end of the month. If not, I might have it as a start of the Chatelaine retreat. We'll see. I'm just going to go with the flow. But that's the other thing that is calling my name currently as well. So that's it. That's what I had to show you for today. Now I have collection enhancements. So for anyone who doesn't like to see haul or any of that, please feel free to move on. In the meantime, I will be getting my haul. I'll probably go over what I bought at the Yorkshire retreat and a few bits online first, and then we'll see how we're doing on time. Right, so Nashville market happened obviously in March and I even though I didn't pre-order anything um, I did end up ordering a few things once stuff started popping up mainly stuff that is harder to get later on like if I knew for example Suet Peak site went there and brought certain things physically that are usually things that you don't find here I pick them up so as part of that she had a few things from a company called Chantel's 141 and Chantel's 141 they do a lot of the wooden stuff for hands-on designs and, and other designs so I thought I'll pick up these finishing things not that I finish FFO anything but you know I might have an FFO kick at some point so she had these three sets set of three they go with some designs from hands-on design where they are round but i thought they would be good for some christmas ornaments round ones like the brenda gervais ones as well i believe the primrose cottage have some round ones that are really pretty snowmen as well and this came as a pack of three as part of that you got this little hoop as a thank you for free to um yeah as a thank you and it is a finishing little hoop as well so let me show you you can like put something in between some small finish she also had these boards and she had two sizes so i got both sizes the small and the large and these are very versatile should be able to finish anything in it as well and then she also had these pedal boards but what i really really loved is the design on the pedal board so whatever you would want this has a there's a hands-on design that goes on this i don't know i necessarily want to do that but whatever i do i'd probably want it to be thin enough to show the design around it as well you could use it on the plain side but look that, that is just too too pretty so that was the wood stuff I got for finishing. I did pick up this, which is, I was surprised how little it is. Um, it's Shepherd's Bush and it's called Stitching Calms the Soul. And inside it, you get the bag and the threads and the buttons. And the little buttons as well. There, to do the whole bag and this is something i could easily pick up and finish i might actually take this on the plane with me and i bet you if i don't finish it on the way there i could finish it on the way back and it's something easy to stitch on because i'll use the bag to to hold the threads and it's easy to to carry it even got, comes with needles so that was another thing i picked up and then the other thing i picked up from sue at peak site is this fabric from fiber on a whim called Coco and I really really and it is a 40 count fat quarter I am not a very brownie girl in terms of colors I want to stitch on but I really liked the look of this online and it's got like yellow splotches that gives it a bit of a I don't know I just I just it gives it a bit of interest and I really 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 like that do you see there you can see like the yellow splotches so I really liked that she had only one fifth quarter left. So I quickly picked it up from um, a ladies de-stashing on eBay. And I blame Maggie at Kitchen Whips for this one. But she was de-stashing Sakura 
by Autumn Lane Stitchery and I felt I had to pick her up. I know I could have bought the PDF directly from them, but I really, really like how Erin designs the whole booklet backwards. Sorry, my hair is really... So he designs the booklet both back and front and it looks so good. I just absolutely loved it. So I had to pick it up and I really, really like her. I like how this looks like it's the sun under behind her but it also looks like it's an umbrella behind her i love her colors and i saw maggie kitchen whips was stitching on her this month and then i saw her on ebay the next day and i was like i need to pick her up so i picked that up from the same seller while i was there i picked up from heartstring simply simple from heartstring sampler hoop there is hoop there is and this is very versatile one color put, use any fabric you want i have loads of colorful fabrics so it will be perfect i really like this is a set there is others that are stitching references in this style as part of this and i really really like them but you don't really find them for sale in the uk i'm not sure why because you find all the harder hurt string exemplary but i haven't seen them in many places so i do want to pick the others this was released december 2020 so it's not like a, a recent release um but yeah i yeah you don't find them very often so i thought i'd pick that up and then i picked up this book it's a woodchild book and it's in celebration of 40 years established in 1970 so this would have been a 2010 um book and it's got a mix of things in it it's got it's got some pyramid designs it's got some Debbie mom designs mill hill jim shore um mirabilia tia governor so it's got a mix but the reason i picked the main reason i picked this book and this book is not out of print do not go and um pay out of print prices for this right you can find it at one to three stitch but she had it at at a good price so i thought i'd pick it up but the reason i did pick it up was the mirabilia that is inside it i saw it stitched online and i thought she is gorgeous because it's not the usual lady and this is it and it's a mermaid and there is the ship in the seas and it's got a really beautiful border now the border here doesn't do it justice actually stitched it looks really really good it's a very good chart Whoop. it's called red skies at the night but it's a really good chart it has other things like that mill hill oh, it's so cute and it has actually a mill hill little town it's a mill hill christmas village shops in it so it's got that whole shop in it um which i can see myself stitching it's got a little lucky cat by jim shore which i absolutely love as well i could i i, I see myself stitching i probably wouldn't stitch this you're always welcome in a pineapple and it's very very heavily beaded because it's a mill hill one I probably wouldn't stitch that but you know what for the price i got it it is very worth it even if i stitch only red skies in this book it's got yeah it's got a li like quite a few really pretty designs so i do highly suggest it if you like this kind of stuff oh it's got a little santa look at that santa but yes i picked up that book and it is in print don't forget do not pay stupid prices for it because i've seen it for stupid like going for stupid prices because people think 2010 it's out of print um the same seller had a few fabrics and i asked like can i have a deal and we did a bit of deal especially because their fabrics some of it were fiberlicious fabric which is very hard to buy here because of brexit and how it all works it her postage is expensive because it's expensive but also you have to spend a certain amount so that she is not liable to pay taxes because it's just very complex the whole system so unless i made an order that is probably 200 dollars which probably would get hit by customs i don't really bother ordering fiberlicious 
fabrics but they are really really gorgeous so and these were very good price so the first one uh and then the other thing was grace notes fabric they i had never seen them for sale here this lady obviously was on hair fabric of the month i spoke to this lady and she's unfortunately fallen ill and this this sashing everything and yeah i got a good deal so i got fiberlicious ashes to ashes fat half and this is a very like gray plain kind of fabric just a little bit of mottling but i thought it will be perfect for when i want something dark but i don't want it to be black that's the color and the reason it looks a bit blue is how the light it's actually all gray it's how the light is reflecting it doesn't have a half half color the next one does have a half half color now the next one is one that i know that aquabella by my bella filipina is charted on this one but this is a fat half so i don't think i would want to use her on it because it's a fat half but it's so gorgeous <sighs> i don't know i really Maybe I should buy a fat quarter of it to Aquabella. But this is called Teal I Come Home. Teal I Come Home. And look at the, how gorgeous that fabric is. So the thing is, if I did do Aquabella on it, I'd waste a lot of fabric around. I don't need a fat half for her, for sure. But I think she'd look gorgeous on it. So either I'll, I'll order a fat quarter of this or I'll just use it for something else. I have toyed with the idea of unstitching Amphitrite by Bella Filipina, which needs a fat half, and stitching it on this. You know what? Here we go. Let's have a bit of a live. Let's have a bit of a live moment. This is my Amphitrite. Amphitrite needs a fat half because she's huge. She is this Bella, Bella Filipina here. Right. And you you can vote and tell me what I should do. So I have this stitched on or started on a jaudry called seaweed. And that's the fabric I have hair started on. Oh, it's upside down. That's the fabric I have hair started on. So it's greeny with some blue. It's called seaweed. And this is the start I have right now. So, you know, I have quite a bit of stitching, but I don't have enough that I would be too bothered about um, removing. I would easily frog that. I'm not precious about it. However, what do you think? Let me know. Amphitrite, queen goddess of the sea. That's how she looks like. This is where I started. So what you're seeing is her little butt, the skin there, and the scepter. I have her on this fabric. But I could potentially start her on this fabric. let me know what you think if i should restart it on this other fiberlicious fabric or if i should keep it on it on what it is and use this for something else that would be great if you gave me your your feedback or your thoughts about it Okay, let's put Amphitrite here now and then I'll put it away later. <laughs> that was like live inspired, not planned at all. Um, the, oop, did I just move you? I just moved you. I'm sorry. The next is actually a full yard and it's called, it's a Grace Notes fabric and it's called Earl Grey. And that is a really usable, beautiful bluish gray it is a full yard literally i could use it as a blanket 
but I, I, I literally got it for the price of a fat half I couldn't I couldn't 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 pass it along um, all these full yards I got at a very good price because of the amount I bought from her and I couldn't I just couldn't pass them so that is Earl Grey then the next one was Swiss Mocha again 32 count full yard from Grace Notes fabric she had her fabric of the month and this is like a pinky brown kind of fabric very both of these I started thinking about chatelaines I think both would go really nice for chatelaines I was thinking maybe rosarium like the rose garden for this and then the other piece is called fermata and she is um I know she's a musician she's a piano teacher grace notes fabric which quite a bit of fab uh, her fabric is uh, the name is inspired by music like this one fermata and that is absolutely gorgeous it's a very goldy yellow it's hard to show in real life but yeah it's beautiful and again that's a full yard as well i did get the yorkshire retreat from hawking hobbies i did get, did get the med tea party which is alice um, I already have Snow White and I also um, have the Magic Lamp. So got the Mad Tea Party as well. Um, I did pick up from them a little cute Easter Milhel. The Purple Chick. And this one is one where you stitch the front and the back and then you attach them together. Very pretty. From the lady at the haberdashery. I picked up some interlocking siesta bars and that's because the siesta bars I have that one up there there is the biggest I have um, and I needed some bigger so these are a few inches bigger this is probably the same size as the one up there and I got few that are a few inches bigger that I needed them this was another Nashville buy from through the end and she's on ebay and i couldn't help myself they are the heartstring samplery kind of wooden bobbins with a sheep a bee and a butterfly even if i don't use them as a bobbin i could use them standing in a holder because they're really pretty I did get a few things from through the end. I'm just trying to see which side I put them on. Nope. Yeah, there. There you go. I got the heirloom tomato. And the reason I got this is I wanted to stitch this by June and go to the Yorkshire meetup because Lynn, the Lancashire stitcher, is going to show a finishing for it. And I don't know if I'm going to manage to get myself down now because i might have something else but if i don't i will aim to stitch this if i do manage to go down i'll take it with me for the finishing class of a berry with that i picked winter wonderland by blackberry designs i really really like this one it does have an alphabet up here that i wouldn't stitch but i do love everything else i love the little animals in the border and i picked up the cookbook from Nashville, Happiness is Homemade. This is the first time I've picked it up out of curiosity because you never see what's inside it. And, you know, there's there's recipes from many designers and also there's little designs that you can stitch. Um, you know, just like when you need smalls and kind of thing. Aunt Clara's lemon pudding pound cake from Bad Johnson. Oh, that looks good. Anyway, so it's got a mix of recipes and little um, patterns. Uh, from one to three stitch, I got the Stitchy Witch Mouse. She comes with her little hat. 
I got another applique kit, not that I finished the stocking or the Christmas tree uh, skirt that I need to finish for my mum and my niece. I, I need to stitch on them. Uh, I'll, I'll be picking them up after the Mira and the Bella retreat, probably in June I'll pick them up. But this cushion cover, I loved it so much. I don't know if I'd want it as a cushion cover. It gives you enough stuff to be a cushion cover, but I don't know if I wanted that and I, or I wanted a, a wall hanging. But I really, really like that. I, I love poncetas and I'm gutted. I, I, for Christmas, I used to buy a, pon a real poncetta every year. But since I've had Freya, poncetas are... Um, they're poisonous for cats. So I stopped buying them and absolutely got it. This is what instigated the one to three stitch order. The reason I ended up ordering the mouse and the felt kit is this. When I was going through the Nashville releases, I saw this and I thought it was a Nashville release and I couldn't find it in the UK and I went on one to three stitch and ordered it. Only to realize it's been released last August at the expo, the online expo. But I don't feel sorry. I just feel sorry that I missed it before because I really, really like this. It's a Teresa Cogat. It's called Seaworthy and it comes with three designs. You've got the big design here, which I would like to stitch, but obviously I would either remove or change the um, American flag. There is the middle one, which is probably the first one I would stitch. It's got the little whale, your lobster, the mermaid, and all the fish creatures. I really, really like hair. And then you've got the really small one. So you've got three designs in it. They are mostly DMC. I'm pretty sure there's only... The middle one calls for one week's die work. Everything else is DMC and the big one as well. It's all DMC except one week's die work. And the small one is all DMC. So it's really easy to kit up. So that was what instigated the, the whole one to three stitch order. Now, this is everything coming from the Yorkshire retreat. Sarah from Sarah Marnie, Marnie's mix pack was there. Um, and I have been looking at these for the last few years. Every time I see her at a retreat, I always look at the Twisted Band Sampler Dinky Dye Silks pack. I've already started Twisted Band Sampler. I've started it using a different color palette, not this. And now I... Hold on, please. So the Twisted Band Sampler, this is my start. And I had a, a Vicky Clayton silk and my plan was, so I've got multiple Vic, of these Vicky Clayton silk from a dragon horde. This was the first time she was dying. And my plan was to stitch the rest of it with colors that match it. So I'll go and pick purples up and, and that. And I think it will look good, but also I like this back. So the I, what's going to happen is either I'm going to end up restarting this with this pack or I'm going to stitch this how I originally wanted and use this pack for another one of her twisted band samplers. Maybe, maybe the rainbow one that goes the other way around. We'll see. We shall see. This is becoming in a very impromptu kind of thing today. Um... Also from Sarah at Marnie's Mixed Bag, I picked up this Chatelaine and it is the Splendid Blue number two. Um, I usually prefer PDF, but this was much cheaper than the PDF. It was less than a third the price of the PDF and it is not too bad to, um, to kit up. It's got four water lilies, one dinky dice pearl, which I already have, two dinky dice silk, one Gloriana, one pearl Gloriana, couple treasure braid, couple silk lamies. So it's all stuff I can easily either source in or I have in stash already. So I bought that. Then from the lady that I've just realized. I've got another mouse. Oh no, this is a, um, right. Yes, I got another mouse on a D stash. So this mouse is the Miss Witchy mouse. And you see the Miss Witchy mouse will go with the Stitchy Witchy mouse. And even though they've got the same hat, 
they actually have a different design and one has a broom the other doesn't kind of thing and um, so i got that on a d stash uh, from a lady that didn't want to stitch it so the embellishment pack is already fully there and um, and then everything else i'm pretty sure i got this from a d stash as well so this was a d stash from sam um, and that's the button pack that comes with it and this is called the halloween night by shepherd's push i'll have to watch out and stitch this on the correct count because because of the buttons otherwise they will not fit right so from the lady that was the stashing a lot like she's got a haberdashery but it's the stashing all her old um stitching stuff because she cannot really see to stitch anymore this is where i absolutely went mental and bought loads and loads and loads and i i blew the budget within five minutes she showed up so first of all i got this blackbird design called from me to d and the the pattern is just at the back of it and i don't know if this is in print or not i didn't check it is a 2002 one it's a very quick stitch it's pretty and it's got like the um smyrna crosses the heart is made of smyrna crosses i thought it was really really cute the next thing i bought is i really like these and i'm I have one or two of them already and quite honestly I haven't even checked I'm sorry I'm, I'm removing the prices at the same time I should have done this before but um, I should have checked if it is the same one that I have because this is a designer called Liz Turner and she designed for creative needlework and she has these gardens are really really pretty and they use specialty stitches as well and um, so this is the the 16th century english um, garden which is family garden and this is the 17th century le jardin francais which is the french garden i'm pretty sure i've got the 18th century one which would be the next one after them they are pretty hefty because even though you see them like this and you think oh you know you actually if you look it's it's very hefty because it has a lot of speciality stitches and it will show you how to do all these speciality stitches and these are quite old um i'm trying to see if there is a date on them but i don't see a date but they are not like i don't know if they are sold anymore i've never seen them on sale the next is a another blackbird design and this is called the summer summer basket and it's a band sample it's a band sampler and a thread keep so you see you've got the thread keep and you've got the band sampler i am not a fan of the alphabet but i like the motif and i really liked the thread keep and i like the border so i'd probably like um cut it down to what i like from it next is from the hillside hillside samplings earth laughs and earth laughs sampler and again i really liked it because these are all like specialty stitches the basket is all specialty stitches i wouldn't do the border with the alphabet but i do all the middle the basket and the wordings i really like that this is a rosewood manner i had never seen before and it is called wilkman and I think even if you did them separately or you did just a square rather than the full thing, they would be 
really really cute i don't know if i would want to put the word welcome in because obviously it's not in english and it's not in a language that i speak just now I'm, I'm trying to see if she has there is an alphabet on it um so here she gives you an alphabet so you could change welcome in to what well, actually she's charted it for you so there is welcome in and there is welcome charted as well so i could chart it as welcome and if you wanted to do part of it as a bell pull she charts the how to stitch this for the bell pull as well typical karen kluba she always has like options inside it this is a birds of a feather called bitter flower sampler and i know that the birds of um birds of a feather are not all in print anymore you still can find some i as usual i would skip the alphabet on the outside but i love the pot and i love the sentiment of the words this was a kit it's actually two kits um, and they are from the historic needlework guild and this is the american the american legacy collection the pineapple and it comes as a kit you've got all the wool and the fabric for it and this is the strawberry pot and again the strawberry pot comes with the full kit as well then there is a Kesslin's design called Katrina's Christmas this is very easy to kit. It only calls for a few things. It comes with the beads, but also look, it's easy to change color on it as well. Obviously, you know why I'm attracted to it. It's all the specialty stitches. Um, I really, really liked it. Next is a another blackbird design. And this is called Live Each, Live Each Season. And I don't know if it's a, a an out of date or not. I'm just looking to see if there is a date on it. It is an older one, but that's lived each season. And that's all cross stitch. It doesn't have specialty stitches. Another blackbird I got is actually a book, and I had never seen this book before. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, you know what? This needs, this really, 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 really needs to come home with me. It is called A Fine Collection by Blackbird Designs. And what this book is, is there is a design for every month of the year. And I guess it must have been kind of thing where it was supposed to be like a calendar book because you've got a chart, not a chart, a grid for every month that is all pretty like that and then you've got a chart that goes with it for every month that's a pin cushion you've got February's heart which was the pin cushion the heart pin cushion um January celebration I don't know where January celebration was oh February hearts is this actually that's the stitched version they're not consecutive or near each other where the pattern is it's not consecutive or right near each other but you get the gist of it every month it has a page like this where you've got some writing some of them have a recipe and you've got your your little calendar and then you've got a pattern for every month that's april blooms for example see that's that's the april design I loved them I, I i could like go through them one by one but yeah like look at this that is so cute so yes it's a book full of designs and everything it's great look at that little pumpkin i had never seen this book and i was very very chuffed that i could pick it up um so that that was the blackberry designs all the blackberry designs that i picked up 
from her everything else all the other blackbird designs that she had i actually already owned so obviously i i didn't pick them up i got another rosewood manner it's called english tapestry sewing box look at that i don't think i'd do it as a sewing box i just really liked the flowers so i think if i had to do it it wouldn't be a sewing box but i'd definitely stitch that i think it looks really good another birds of a feather and this one is called i don't know what it's called because it's not its own original it's got a needle in it so she must have been stitching it out oh, a very fine sampler this must be a really old one like quite older than the other i do not see a date but it says bof3 so oh i don't know is it the tarragon i don't know but the chart is like proper old school kind of chart it's definitely been stitched before because it's got tape on it so it's a bit battered but you know what I, I don't mind so i really for this one i really liked remove the alphabet and i liked everything else the bottom and we're getting to the bottom of the pile and then we're gonna stop i also got this is it was a a mystery stitch along when it started it's a with dye needle and thread and it is called if i can ever remove this it is a birds of a feather a mystery sampler design by brenda gervais so when it came out it came out as three designs and that is the final designs how it looks like and the colors on this is gorgeous i believe tracy is stitching tracy from tracy and designs is stitching this um someone else i know and they started and the colors look fabulous they look much nicer in real life that was the three parts i got ida this is um from the good housewife and i know this is a very sought after pattern that you don't find it very often and it's called Ida May Crow unfortunately she didn't have Ira Ray Crow only the lady but you know one is better than nothing and um, so I got that um, and then the other absolute jackpot and it's the last thing I got from her actually it's not the last thing I had a oh yes there you are I had a pair of scissors that look very sharp and she said they're really really good and even though they are prim um they are actually made in japan and they're like the one of the best scissors she's ever had and you know she's a stitcher embroiderer so i trusted her and i got some trim ribbon trim from her as well and last but not least from her i got this jackpot here so this kit has two designs it's got when i am sewing which is a small project portfolio from the drawn thread and then the pin pillow and scissors fob now not only it has the patterns it also has a conversion because it calls for dinky dyes over a swire water lilies it has the fabric and it has all the victoria clayton the vicky clayton silks plus all the stuff to do the finishing for it and that i feel was proper i hit proper jackpot with this i look very forward to stitching on this it's got like the usual like lots of like specialty stitches that the drawn thread have i had never seen this design let alone the kit and wow when i saw this i was like wow absolutely gorgeous so i'm really happy with my haul i overspent by a lot but i 
nevertheless i'm really happy with my haul the last thing i'm gonna show you is actually um it's picked up from a d stash as well but it's a different D, like from a different person it was from the d stash in yorkshire and this was a plum street sampler and it's a cute little small jacks hmm, it's got jack sweet chop on it but also it has mary you so i think it's called mary you but it's part of the jacks jack sweet chop and you've got like the blackish kind of sheep and the white sheep and the little christmas trees and that is it we are it's almost an hour and a half which will probably shorten by a little bit when i edit um you'll probably not see this video for another few days so you won't see it on the sunday um because i've got a few things to do so it will be another few days until i i finish it and um, i edit it but um yes <laughs> that was a lot for today um expect me around the second week of may probably unless i do record on the 28th of april which i could i suppose i could record on the 28th of april 29th of april um and then just you know the 30th whatever i stitch on the 30th which is a i have to drive up to edinburgh on the 30th for the airport and then fly to malta so likeliness is i'll be crocheting or knitting rather than stitching because of the travel it's just easier so i suppose if i if i recorded on the 29th you'd see everything i've stitched in april so i might do that we'll see but yes um that is it for today i hope you have a very good april very good week very good few weeks um, and let me know your thoughts about amphitrite and what i should do with that um i'm, I'm gonna be thinking about it um, it might yeah i'm, I'm gonna th be thinking about it as always thank you for watching my videos thank you for sticking with me especially with such a long video happy stitching i do have you i do hope you have a very good week and yes yeah, send me comments or messages and let me know how you're doing and what you're stitching on and a little bit um, of an update from you guys anyway thank you bye